This conference will now be recorded. This conference will now be recorded. Okay, guys, let's get started. So, in the last session, uh, what we did, we discussed about the duration of the training, and uh, that is 35 hours and daily one and a half hour session, Monday to Friday, and 28 days it's going to take to finish all the topics. Now, we discussed about the historical details of SACM. So, SACM started as SMS System Management Server. Later on, Microsoft changed the name to SCCM System Center Configuration Manager. And later on, Microsoft changed the name again to MECM. So the latest and greatest version of SCCM is 2006 at the moment. And it is like 25 years, which is, uh, you know, for this product to be there in the market. So, um, this is the exam uh, certification details which is already expired now the opportunities we already talked about the opportunities in sccm then uh, there are three sites in sccm central primary and secondary now we'll discuss about these sites in more details today okay now central administration site let's uh, if you <clears throat> make a note of these uh, points guys okay central administration side point number one why we need a central administration side is when you have when you have more than one primary site then only central administration site is required otherwise it is not required that is the reason it is called as this is an optional site okay it is not mandatory to have it third central administration site can manage it supports up to how many devices 825000 devices in central administration hierarchy for example you have cas and then you have primary site let's say primary site 1 and primary site 2 and then you have some secondary site like this right secondary side and secondary side so the total number of devices from cas to primary to secondary if you calculate the number of devices here number of devices here then it should not exceed more than this one okay so it can support up to 825000 devices in a cas hierarchy in one hierarchy okay that's the maximum capability of central administration side okay now central administration side as you saw in the picture it will always sit on the top it sits on the top top of the hierarchy top of the hierarchy it will be on the top of the hierarchy clear central administration side where will you install this you can install this it is installed on windows server 2012 or greater windows server 2012 or greater okay point number six is it needs a database it needs uh, it needs what sql server database microsoft sql server database you can't use mongodb or mysql or um, oracle or sybase you have to have sql server database for this one okay so central administration side will be like this and it will have a database it's gonna store in the information in its database okay so basically what happens it collects the information from primary side database so primary side will also have a database okay all primary will have a database okay and primary side will replicate its data with central administration side database so point number seven will uh, it collects data from primary 
site database okay point number 7 it manages primary sites it manages primary site client has got nothing to do with central administration side okay client that means suppose if you have 5000 computers right let's say these are windows 10 5000 computers and you install a client on these computers the client sscm client which you install in the computers these client will never talk to central administration side that's not possible for the client to talk to central administration side so point number nine is uh, clients uh, will clients do not do not talk to central administration side so clients do not basically client has got nothing to do with the central administration side basically it will be managing the sites uh, primary site not the clients okay so these are some information about central administration side okay so it needed when you have more than one primary site it is an optional site it supports maximum 825000 devices it sits on the top of the hierarchy it is installed on the windows server 2012 or greater it needs sql server database it collects sql uh, it collects data from primary site server it manages primary sites and clients have got nothing to do with central administration side i hope it's clear let me talk about the primary site now okay make sure you guys make a note of this one now we'll talk about primary site primary site is mandatory that's the ma first point you cannot skip primary site suppose if you are going to install sccm you have to have um, at least one primary site okay you can't skip a primary site so you need to have a primary site that is a, a mandatory site in sccm second it supports up to 175000 clients okay point number 3 it needs sql server database sql server database just like cas you know cas has a database similarly primary site also have a database so primary site will also have a database okay point number four it collects data from secondary site so suppose if it has secondary site here and it has secondary site here secondary side will also have a database okay secondary side will also have a database it will collect the secondary side will replicate the data with primary like this okay point number five you can install this on windows server 2012 or greater it is installed on windows server 2012 or greater okay either you install it on 2012 or r2 or 16 or 19 depends on you point number six is it manages uh, clients in well connected network well connected network what is well connected network that is, that means lan network suppose you started a company let's say in new york this is um, let's say this is a building okay this is a building of 10 10 floors let's say this is a building of 10 floor now in every floor you have like 1000 computers okay in every floor you have 1000 computers so total let's say you have 10,000 computers 10,000 computers right 
So in order to manage all these devices, all these devices are located in one building and all of them are connected with LAN network. Okay, you need one primary site and that it will be standalone primary site to manage all these 10,000 devices. So it manages the devices in well connected network that is LAN network. Suppose if you have devices on WAN network, that means in case your headquarters is in New York and your branch office is in London. Okay, if your branch office is in London and you have let's say 5000 devices in London, then primary side will not be able to, you know, uh, fulfill the requirements of all these computers in London because these computers are not on the LAN network. They are on which network? Wide area network. So wide area network is limited network and you uh, have limited connectivity, you know, uh, so it is chances are very high to choke up the network if you, you know, send packages and, and packets to the to the London computer. So what we need is we need secondary site. Basically, we will be managing these devices which are not in the headquarter through primary site and primary site will report to. Uh, sorry, secondary site and secondary site will report to primary site like this. So it manages client in well connected network like LAN network. Okay, point number seven. It collects. Uh, it replicates data. Replicate. Data. With. CAS database central administration side database. Suppose if you have CAS. Okay. In case if it, you have CAS, if it is not, if CAS is not there, then it does not do anything. This point number seven is optional. That is conditional. In case if you have CAS, so CAS will be like this, right? And primary will have database, and CAS will also have database. In case if CAS exists, then primary will replicate the data with central administration side database. Okay. So uh, without this you can't have uh, you can't manage your devices. Okay, so you must have a primary site That's a mandatory it supports up to 175,000 devices. It needs SQL day server database It collects data from secondary site. It is installed on Windows Server 2012 and greater It manages client in well-connected network. It replicates data with CAS database Okay, that's the primary site guys Now you have secondary site Secondary site as I already discussed about this one secondary site is basically optional site you, you will need this on a condition. What is the condition when you have devices when you uh, have devices in um, Remote location Remote location like branch office right with limited network with limited network bandwidth okay so we need secondary site for computers which are located in branch office not in headquarter and then point number three it again it is installed on windows server 2012 windows server 2012 or greater okay point number four it um, it supports how much devices supports up to 15000 clients okay let's for example you have your um, primary site in new york right and you have branch Okay, in Chennai, Mumbai, Hyderabad, let's say there are multiple branch offices. So let's say Chennai. And Chennai has got 13,000, 30,000 computers, right? And we have Mumbai. Mumbai has like 15,000 clients. So one secondary site is more than sufficient for the computers which are located in Mumbai because it supports up to 15,000 clients. 
but what about chennai chennai has 30000 computers so it needs two secondary site ss1 and ss2 so with 15000 devices will be reporting to ss1 right 15000 devices will be reporting to ss1 another 15000 devices will be reporting to ss2 because the maximum capability given by microsoft is 15000 so we will split into two we will have two secondary site and both will report to primary site like this so it supports up to uh, 15000 client then it needs it uh, stores data in uh, database okay and what database it supports there are two types of database primary site supports sql server database central supports sql server database but secondary you can use sql express for secondary site server so secondary site um, it uses what it supports two database it supports sql express sql express or if you don't want to go with sql express you can also go with sql server database both are microsoft product okay sql express is to just you know collect the data and then pass it on sql server database is like you know the whole server and uh, it will have fun full functionalities secondary site is the only one which supports sql express it is free you don't have to pay anything that's the reason we need um, most of the time all, almost every secondary site uh, we use sql express to store the data because it is just to capture the information and then pass it on to primary site okay then uh, without primary site a secondary cannot exist because primary is like a parent for secondary so it cannot exist point number seven secondary side it cannot exist without primary side without primary side you can't uh, have secondary side okay uh, point number eight uh, you cannot move a secondary site to another primary site. For example, there is P1, primary site 1, and you have secondary site. And currently it is reporting to P1. Suppose you install P2, primary site 2, and suppose, let's say, you would like this secondary site to start reporting to this one. This is not possible. Okay? So secondary will always report to its parent primary site. Okay? So secondary will always report to its parent primary site okay you can't uh, change the parent okay like this it is not possible so these are some of the informations guys uh, for central uh, primary and secondary i hope it's uh, clear for everyone okay now i'm gonna talk about the architectural diagram so as we discussed yesterday um suppose let's say you started a company okay you started a company in where new york okay let's say you started a company in new york and new york has 20000 devices in one location in one building okay all are located on lan network so you need what you need one single primary site and that will have a database and all these 20000 devices will be managed by this primary site now suppose you expanded your business right and you have a started come uh, branch office in mexico this one is mexico and that mexico the location has 1000 computers right another let's say one more branch office in uh, uh, in uh, san francisco 
and that has like 2000 devices now in order to manage these branch office devices since from new york mexico to new york it is on van network right both of them are on the van connection not on lan connection so what we do is uh, we install secondary site here and we install secondary site here and secondary site will report to primary site like this okay and it will have a database and it will also have a database and the data will get replicated to primary site database that is how the uh, uh you know primary plus secondary is uh, designed when you have headquarter plus branch offices now suppose if you have a uh, total number of devices exceeding from this one because one primary can manage up to 175,000 devices only now let's say you have expanded your business in america now you would like to move on to europe so let's say you started in europe you you know you have uh, put up uh, let's say 20,000 another 20,000 devices in London okay in Europe and then you have some branch offices as well in Europe let's say you have some branch office Paris then you have sorry Geneva in Switzerland right and these locations have 2000 devices 2000 devices so what we will do we will install secondary site here we will install secondary site here and we will have primary site here this one is primary site 2 okay because we have already exhausted this number and secondary will report to same kind of architecture here the primary um, the will be managing these two secondary site in europe similar kind of architecture let's say in asia pacific in hong kong let's say you have another 20000 devices and so you install p ps2 uh, ps3 sorry primary site 3 right and secondary site in multiple branch offices let's say you have uh, singapore 2000 devices and let's say you have uh, indonesia another like 2000 devices so this primary will be reporting back to this one now each will have a database as you see prime this primary will also have a database this will also have database this will also have database this will also have database this is gonna have a database this will also have database so either you manage these uh, three different primary site separately right let's say you we will have three uh, different uh, person let's say kashif is managing america's primary site all the devices in america's will be managed by this primary site and kashif is the administrator for that let's say danish is managing all the devices in europe location primary site two and amit is going to manage primary side three so there are three different people okay managing these three architecture either you manage separately that's also possible or you can instead of managing separately you can install cas on the top okay somewhere in europe uh, anywhere depends on you either americas or europe or asia pacific and all these primary site will report to cas right and cas will also have a database so all the data will get replicated to cas database so this kind of architecture for companies which are very big like let's say accenture deloitte ibm which have like more than 200000 devices all all over the globe okay generally the architecture is for this one primary plus secondary 99% uh, you will see primary plus secondary uh, because you will hardly have companies which is having more than 175000 devices or you can 
manage let's say some companies hire another company let's say uh, coca cola coca cola this is coca cola coca cola and i'm going to delete the cast for now okay now this company is coca cola and now coca cola purchased this one thumbs up coca cola already have primary side it is managing all its devices you know let's say only um, coca cola has only 50000 computers all over the globe 50000 computers and when it purchased a new company thumbs up and thumbs up has like 10000 computers okay so and they both have primary side coca cola has a primary side and thumbs up has a primary side so they can manage separately or you can create a cache and both will report to this one even though the number of devices is not um, 175000 right if you calculate the total number is only 60000 devices but if you want to keep the architecture like this you can keep it like this or you can then if you do not want separate management then you can integrate all these one 10000 devices into primary site in coca cola uh, and make it one architecture instead of two different architecture understood any question guys in this one sites sir uh, if uh, i want to understand that uh, secondary set of thumbs up thumbs up if i want to add uh, 10000 in uh, coca cola so i need to uh, replicate the secondary data and primary side data to coca cola or it will get automatically how can it it's possible sorry i in this architecture as you're talking about this yeah yeah, yeah yeah in this coca cola okay. side because you said uh, that uh, uh, the primary side will not replicate data uh, secondary side will not replicate his database to uh, his parent domain uh, parent side so I just wanted to know how this 10,000 uh, will work. Yeah, so this 10,000 device secondary side will have a database, right? The, these secondary side database will get replicated here, right? Understood? Yeah. And finally, it will get replicated in cache database. This okay. one and this one. Okay. Understood. Okay. Let me show you in different. For example, this one is Coca Cola. And this one is Thumbs Up. Now, this primary site has a database. And this primary site has a database. And CAS also has a database, right? So whatever the information and all these secondary side will have database. So these secondary side will also have da database, right? Database, 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 and database. And they will rep replicate its data with primary side database like this. And it will replicate here. Finally, all the database what the primary site has, the primary site, this database will get replicated to CAS. This database will get replicated to CAS. Is that clear or not? Yeah, it's clear. But mm -hmm. I just want to know, I, I, yeah, it's clear. But I just want to know uh, the mm -hmm. uh, CAS is mandatory in this scenario, right? I mean, if without CAS, I cannot. Uh, uh, replicate these 10,000 uh, thumbs up devices with right. no. Google. Okay, yeah. Uh, no, y yeah, you can't. You will have to manage separately. If you don't want to go with uh, uh, CAS, then you don't need CAS. And then you separately manage this one and separately manage this one. And uh, the whatever the devices which are Coca Cola will be managed by this one. And whatever the devices in thumbs up will be managed by this one. So you don't need this one. It's not mandatory and data will not get replicated. Okay. okay. Got it? Yeah. Got it.
हेलो यस कशिप रूपेश यस रूपेश so my my question may it may silly question you know like uh, just want to know what it is exactly uh, so this primary side and secondary side so is that the computers or you know like uh, it may any uh, servers server which are installed on windows server as i mentioned earlier i think um okay so i think i deleted that one uh, the previous one basically the primary side and the central administration side or secondary side we install it on windows server so we will have a windows server right right on that box we will make let's say server so we will this is the platform windows server and on top of it we will install cas server just like sql database what do you do you have a windows server right windows server yeah. will be there and then you make that server as a sql server so on top of it so windows server is what it's a platform and on top of it you install the cas or sql or primary or secondary okay. understood so it, it 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 has to be done by the one person or of it is there, there is a multiple people to do it the deployment mostly sure. in companies in companies you know they hire people from a different vendor like uh, you know when i uh, i have implemented uh, uh, sccm in many companies so they will hire a consultant to uh, you know design the architecture plus install all these uh, site and site servers so it depends wow. uh, either one person i have done a, you know a deployment uh, without uh, having multiple people you know i myself deployed uh, sscm in a few companies as well and wherein if it was a big architecture i actually hired you know um, you know more people to do the deployment so that we can do it as quickly as possible depends on company to company yeah got you. your role your role will not be to install all these cas and sql database and primary side and secondary side because when you go in company by default i mean not by default i mean you know either way they already have sccm or they will have sccm and they will hire somebody the consultant to install everything and then your task will start after the installation of sccm like to work okay. on operation deploy application deploy patches make sure all the computers are up to date make sure the applications are present in software center so that user can download and install themselves so your task is start after the after the installation of primary site or, or central or secondary but in my training without installation we will not be able to do anything right so i start from scratch so that you have in case if you are you know asked to do that you will be able to install all these sites yourself understood okay. yeah good okay any other question uh, sir how the licensing is done in uh, sccm it based on the devices or it based on the uh, site choice uh, based it previously we used to have to license the standard license and database data center license standard okay. and data center data center is what and is uh, let me show you standard a standard that means you get only sccm system center system center is what it is a suite inside system center you had many um, product let's say sc uh, om scom sorry scom you know system center operation manager then you had sc um, system center virtual machine manager sc vmm right then you had sc um, ep endpoint protection system center scsm right system center uh, service manager and we, sccm system center configuration manager right so if you would like to take a standard that means you will get license only for sccm if okay. you take stand uh, license for data center okay then you are basically taking license for system center system center has many products like scom scvm 
this one, this one, this one. So that comes under data center license. Okay, sir. understood. Yep. Now what they have now what they are doing is after this um, new release of SCCM, they have actually um, uh, integrated uh, with uh, uh, EMS uh, endpoint. Uh, uh, basically, it is you. They are trying to integrate with uh, user-based license. Okay. Okay. Understood. Just like Intune. Intune has user-based license. Okay. So based on the number of license you are consuming, and they are going to charge you according to that. Like Azure and Office 365. Right. Right. ASA. Right. Okay, so uh, I hope you guys understood the concept of uh, sites, central, secondary, primary, right? Now I'm gonna uh, talk about site. Uh, yeah. Uh, Kasif, uh, yeah. I just want to ask. So, the, what is the major difference between the cache and the primary site? It is the only the number of support uh, that can give to the primary means. Uh, it, is it just a number? That is the difference between the cache and the primary site. No, or it, no. Is, it is okay. Cache is basically managing sites. Cache will have multiple primary sites. Let's say primary site one and primary site two, right? So cache is for reporting. It is not deploying. All the deployments starts from this one primary site. Let's say all the policies basically you have to deploy Google Chrome or Firefox or operating system or software updates. Everything starts from here. You can't deploy Google Chrome from CAS. Understood. Okay. okay. So basically it for it is for inventory purpose. Whatever the information it collected, this primary site it has collected, and this primary site collected, it is gonna get in one console rather than in because this will contain 10,000 devices this will contain 10,000 devices and if you connect to this console you will have information about only this 10,000 computer if you connect to this one you will have information about only these 10,000 devices but CAS database suppose you connect to CAS console then you will have information about 20,000 devices this and plus this so basically it's for majorly it is for inventory purpose to collect inventory and keep it in one central location and manage sites primary sites but the deployment happens from primary itself you deploy from primary okay clear understood yes sir. Yeah, now uh hmm? so regarding the architecture I can't so hear you properly. Is it properly. like the ITN? I'm yeah, go ahead. Now. Your voice is very low. Go ahead. I will manage. So regarding the yeah, can you ask your question, please? Yes. So hmm? uh, the architecture that uh, has been displayed is like ideal condition or is it like mandate uh, for uh, each and every organization or project so that uh, this is like a standard for, uh, standard one standard this is like a standard as per microsoft uh, um, best practice but you can you know have different architecture as well but you can't like in architecture is it not possible like secondary will now start reporting to CAS. That's not possible. So in architecture, okay. you can like put a primary on branch office as well. OK, and you keep the secondary in headquarter. Depends on the data center where you have, you know. And all we are talking about that uh, users are in office location, right? Not remote users who are not in office. All this ID scenario we are talking about the architecture is. Right. Okay. Okay. So can't we manage uh, with one primary site for uh, across the globe? For example, if I'm having primary site in US and uh, 
Mm. We have to manage from APAC anemia. Okay, so site. suppose you have you have primary site in New York, right? Yes. And you have one office in Mumbai, right? Yes. And Mumbai yes. has like say 2,000 devices. London, yes. London has 2,000 devices. And then you have Manila, another like 2,000 devices. Now, all these are located on, connected with which network? Van, Van network. Van. Yes. Let's say maximum you have how much speed? Let's say 100 megabyte. 100 megabyte and 100 megabyte. Now, suppose you have to deploy some application. Okay. or let's say one gigabyte file uh, one microsoft office you have to deploy to mumbai office london office and manila office and each computer will start downloading content one gb file from where from primary side so all will start downloading there are like six thousand computers will start communicating with new york and start downloading new york will it will be like you know frozen i mean the network will choke up understood the whole 100 megabyte line will be utilized by this one people in companies they won't be able to do anything that's the reason we need secondary side okay. because the downloading downloading of content will happen from the secondary side itself rather than all these 2000 computers will download the content from secondary itself rather than communicating to new york all right, so network packet would be so you know that some network. Yes, so if your network, packets. yeah, right. If your network is good enough, right, uh, like similar to LAN network, you don't need secondary side. Just like in Azure, you know, side to side connection or point to side connection. In Azure, you don't need secondary side. I mean, if you in US people, the the internet service provider, they are like giving one GB per second speed. So you don't need secondary side there. But here in India or other countries where you have, you know, limited bandwidth, maybe in future you might not need secondary side. When you when we have 5G network and all. Okay. 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 Now, we have a site roles. <clears throat> Management point, distribution point, software update point, fallback status point. These are some of the important roles uh, which are uh, basically needed for our um, SCCM and client communication and SCCM and database communication, SCCM patching, deployment of patches, deployment of applications, right? Some of the roles are needed. Now I'll talk about uh, these roles step by step. Now, first role is management point. What is a management point? Management point is first point. It's a communication bridge between a server, SCCM server. Suppose you have SCCM server, uh, primary site, for example, and you have 2000 computers here, right? These 2000 computers, what you have, you need to install SCCM client in each one of them. Okay, so if the client is present, then the client will be able to communicate to the primary side through management point. So management point is like a face for, uh, you know, it is like a communication bridge between the client and the server. So this computer does not have client, so it cannot talk with management point. So for communication, you need to install the client. Once you have the client, then only it will communicate to management point and then it is gonna uh, basically the management point will uh, will be acting like a communication bridge between the client and the server. So the first point for MP is management point is 
this is a very crucial role in SACM uh, this is one of the roles and uh, this is uh, communication bridge communication bridge between your server SACM server and client got it that's the first point second point is it collects inventory data inventory data so what inventory because this client which is present here it is going to scan the computer it's going to scan the computer and find out how many um, processor uh, is there um, what is the ram configuration what is the monitor in uh, configuration the make of the monitor the serial number uh, what is how many size free in hard disk and all everything it is going to calculate and it is going to pass on the information to management point similarly this client will pass on the information to management point so all the clients will collect the inventory from the devices and will pass on the information to management point so that is the reason i mentioned it collects inventory it will management point is going to collect the inventory from the client point number three what will happen to the data so suppose it is collecting all the data from all these 2000 computers it will then store it stores the inventory data right data in database because it is collecting all the information it has to store somewhere right so it is going to store them in the database that's the third role of management point fourth role is it keeps all the policies it keeps not all policy but i will mention it keeps policies let's say you have to deploy google chrome to these 2000 computers so from primary side you will instruct the management point to keep the policy here let's say this chrome policy is present here right these 2000 computers the client will communicate to the management point whatever the client you have let's say 2000 computers they will communicate to management point it will find okay the policy says we have to install google chrome so let's get the policy so it will apply the policy to the device get the policy from management point and apply it here get the policy from management point and apply it here so it's like keep on doing it um, from management point it's going to get all the policies and apply to the devices so it keeps all the policies google chrome it's it's what it's a policy software updates let's say you have to deploy software updates to um, 2000 computers or 1000 computers you have to deploy operating system all these policies are kept here for all the computers the client which are installed in the computers they will always go and get the policy it's like you know you after a long time when you go to office suppose you are coming back from uh, a vacation what you do you mark an email that suite at my desk and kindly help yourself so all the people you know will come to your desk and take their uh, uh, you know take the suite and then they will go back to their desk similarly all the clients will take the policy and apply it to the devices it's not push technology SCCM does not push to devices it is basically the client is pulling the data or client is pulling the uh, the policy from the management point clear guys it is a mandatory role so you can't skip this one without this the communication will not be established between the client and the server right without this the inventory cannot be collected without this it cannot store the data in the database without this you can't keep the policy so there are many things which are dependent on this management point so management point is like uh, the heart of uh, primary site understood where will you install this 
it is installed it is installed on primary site or you can install this on secondary site or any other windows server so suppose if you would like to install management point right it's a role right so you have to install somewhere where will you install either you install this on primary site itself most of the time we we install this on primary site okay sorry so suppose if you have primary site so on this primary site what you do you install management point on the same server okay management point or you can install this on secondary side management point is installed on secondary side as well okay and if you do not want to install or if you would like to install one more additional management point you can have another windows server and you can install management point on that one as well okay so that is how the management point is installed either you install it on primary or you install it on secondary or any other windows server clear uh, so this management point is just a role so what difference makes yes. if, if you configure it on the primary or on the secondary this you told me by uh, by default we uh, install it on the primary side only so mm. if we deploy it on the secondary so what will mm. be the impact uh, uh, what is the benefit right what will the, the, so in secondary let's say uh, you have uh, 5000 devices okay and in primary uh, in new york for example you have 2000 devices so the policies and the inventory it is going to happen from here and these 5000 devices it all these 5000 devices will get the policy plus in where it is going to collect the inventory this management point will collect the inventory from all these 5000 devices because if these 5000 start sending the inventory to this management point again the choke up issue will happen clear okay okay Got and it. then it will it will put it in the database and finally this data it will have primary will also have a database it is going to get here okay perfect okay so you have to understand these things before we go into the practical right so at least uh, you know when we start doing the practical you have the high level diagram in your uh, you know overview diagram so that you can connect the dots in case something is not working or some issues you will be able to understand you know you can pinpoint the issue so that's the management point guys it's the heart of uh, ccm um, site so we install this either on primary secondary or uh, windows server any other windows server now the second role is distribution point distribution point is like an atm it's for content storage okay so let's say you have <clears throat> mumbai you have 2000 devices in mumbai 4000 devices in london 5000 devices in uh, manila for example 5000 devices now <clears throat> your uh, your uh, this thing um headquarter is in new york this is your headquarter and uh, this is in new york and uh, you have your primary site here now you what you have to do you need to install uh, let's say google chrome or microsoft office to all the computers in london mumbai and manila so we already have secondary site as we mentioned we will have secondary site in each region region right we will have secondary site in london we will have secondary site in uh, manila and mumbai now these 2000 devices need what google chrome 
or Microsoft Office. Let's say you have to install Microsoft Office. So where they will be downloading the content, we have to have the installer, right? So they these 2000 computer cannot go to internet, right? And download from there. This is not possible, right? It's not Microsoft patches. It is like application. They can't go to any website and click on download. The computer can't, you can't uh, automate those tasks. So rather what you do, you put distribution point on all the secondary sites. A distribution point in Mumbai, distribution point in London, and distribution point in Manila. That will be in on the secondary site server itself. So the content will be downloading, downloaded from the native distribution point. So Mumbai will be downloading content from Mumbai distribution point. London computers will be downloading content from London distribution point, and Manila will be downloading content from Manila distribution point. Understood? Just like I have my bank account in SBI, for example, in uh, in uh, Bihar, okay. And tomorrow I go back to Mumbai, right? So I don't have to come back to Bihar in order to do transaction. We can go to I can go to the nearby uh, state bank and I can do the transaction. Similarly, the computers in Mumbai, they don't have to go to New York. They can download the content from here. London will downloading content from here and Manila will download the content from here. Clear? So basically, uh, the, the policy, you will send it, the Google Chrome file, you will send to all the distribution point from here and the files will be present in each distribution point, all the files. Understood? Clear? You guys there? Uh, yes. Uh, so, is it like mandatory for uh, distribution point uh, to be on secondary site, or like it can be a standalone? Uh, then the whole purpose will be defeated if you don't put a second distribution point on secondary side, because the reason to put the secondary side because it can have multiple roles. It will have man secondary side will have management point. Secondary side will have distribution point. Secondary side will have a software update point, multiple other roles as well. So that everything will have be handled from here. Okay, rather than, it's like, you know, you don't have to go to headquarter. You can go to nearby uh, branch office, uh, nearby MP and DP and get your things done. Understood? Yeah, that. But the, the reason why I'm asking because I have seen in some projects. So this is ideal condition, right? The exact scenario ideally. or standard. Ideal. Okay. Standard okay. one. If you do not want to keep DP on okay. secondary, that is also possible. You can remove that, that one. Mm. Yes. So that will be like a cost saving for servers. That might be the reason some organizations or project they might not be using. They will be using only distribution point. The yeah, side. yeah, 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 right, right, right. So uh, very good. You have brought this point. Good question. So secondary site, suppose there is a, a location, uh, let's say Hyderabad. And in Hyderabad, you have 200 computers. What will you do? Will you install a secondary site here? No. We will not install secondary site because it is just 200 computers. So ideal scenario for a secondary site, which I missed to, uh, you know, update you guys. If the location has 500 computers or more, if you have 500 computers or more than that, then you install a secondary site in that remote location. If any remote location which has 500 computers or more than that, then only you install secondary site. So in Hyderabad, we will install just one DP without secondary site. So the management point will be here on the primary site itself, right? The computer will get the policies from here, but the content it will be getting from here because content is bigger, right? Uh, let's say a Microsoft Office application. It is one gigabyte file. Microsoft, um, um, you know, SQL Server application. It is again like more than one gigabyte. So it is going to download the content from here. But policies, the instruction, it is going to 
get from here and all the inventory information it is going to give back to this management point got it yeah got it but so there might be some difference you know in that uh, again yeah so, okay. yeah so okay. whatever i am saying it is not like you have to follow exactly as it is but this is like best practice and most of the companies are following this kind of architecture Got it. Got it. Okay. but you this is flexible you know this is some if based on your requirement you can you know add or remove the roles Got it? Now uh, the, so the distribution point yeah. is uh, on main for uh, distribution the... point is it's a content storage distribution point is what it's a content storage it's like a go down or a or a you know warehouse where all the files are present and the computers will be downloading content from there so client will download download content from distribution point the client whatever the clients we have they will always be downloading content from distribution point point number three it is a mandatory role in case if you do not install distribution point the clients will not be able to download the content right so it you have to install at least one distribution point okay to uh, for the content point number four <clears throat> um you can install this where will you install install on either you install it on primary site server or you can install this on secondary site server or you may install this on any other windows server or you can install this on windows client computer like windows 10 computer as well you can install this distribution point got it So that's the distribution point guys which you can install this on primary secondary windows server or any other windows server or windows 10 computer okay yes somebody was asking some question okay software update point Anyone from patching team here? Those uh, are uh, uh, work, working on software updates, deployment or patch deployment. Hmm? Yes, no one? Yep. You are working on patch deployment. Okay. Yep. Um, okay. So. For patch deployment, how the patches are deployed? Patches are what? It's the software updates. Basically, it is for improvement or for security of the computer. Microsoft is releasing updates on every second Tuesday of the month. Okay. And in order to update uh, your uh, computers, right? Windows computers, what Microsoft is doing, they are dumping all the patches on their update server so this one is microsoft update server microsoft update server this is on public um, domain and anyone can access this um, server and get the you know when you run windows update on your computer what happens it connects to microsoft update server and then it it tries to download the updates from there and it installs the update on your computer now Suppose you you have 10,000 computers in Mumbai, right? 10,000 computers in Mumbai, another like 5,000 computers in London, right? In total, you have like 20,000 computers. You can't ask people, everyone, to go and connect to um, a Microsoft Update Server, run Windows Update in your computer. It will be, it's not a practical approach. So rather, it is your duty to deploy updates to all the computers and make all the computers up to date if you don't do that then your computers are vulnerable there are say, so many cyber attacks happening all over the globe you see the recent attack blue keep then uh, previously we had ransomware then we had a meltdown in spectre right 
there are many uh, cyber crimes happening all over the globe what is happening is uh, they are encrypting your files and then uh, asking for ransom so you will have WSUS Windows Server Update Services and that server is basically what is the role of this server is gonna communicate with Microsoft Update Server on the internet okay and from here it is gonna get the patches whatever the patches and uh, you know it has all the patches here and WSUS will synchronize only the patches you need right Let's say you need only Windows 10 and Windows Server up updates. That's it. So you will bring the updates into WSUS console. So after the synchronization, then WSUS is going to scan all these computers, these 50 or 20,000 computers that these patches are whether installed already on these computers or they are missing or not required or whatever it is. It is going to scan all the computers and then it will keep those information in its database. So in the database, all the information will be present about all the computers, uh, whether the patches are missing or not missing or already installed. So our role is what, since we are using SCCM, if you don't use SCCM, you can then deploy from S uh, the patches, you can deploy from WSEOS, that is also possible. But since we are using uh, SCCM, so we will not deploy update from SCCM, rather, uh, I mean WSUS, Rather, we will use software update point. Software update point is one of the roles in SCCM which helps you to integrate WSUS into SCCM. So basically, whatever the information WSUS collects in the database, and it is going to pass on to SCCM. So WS software update point role is to integrate WSUS into SCCM so that you will now be able to deploy updates to all the computers what you have through SCCM. So SCCM will be the deployment tool uh, for updates. WSUS will be working in the backend to scan all the computers and connecting to Microsoft Update Server. Clear? Any question, guys? Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, sorry. Uh, can can I know if you don't mind? Uh, what is the meaning of patches in the sense? Is it a software? Software updates. You know the KBs which are um, which we install. Um, suppose if I go to appwiz.cpl and we we installed these are the updates you know let me just uh, bring yeah you see these updates security updates for microsoft windows which uh, released by microsoft and it got installed in my computer so every computer uh, we need to install updates on regular basis otherwise the computer will be vulnerable understood or when you yeah. go to you know suppose if i uh, click on run and then uh, settings and run windows update here update and security and then you see when pending download so if i uh, click on download and install now it is going to download this version currently i'm using the old version of windows so basically uh, whatever the windows update you run you, it connects with microsoft update server and then uh, it gets installed so that is called as a pa patches, right? You see patches. Yeah, these are the patches. You know, these are patches, as you see, KB number. Yeah, yeah. yeah thanks. Patches are for what? Suppose you have uh, developed a software, for example. Um, let's say you have um, created a software called um, um, anything like Uber. Okay. So yeah. Uber application you created uber 1.0 and later on you found some bug okay bugs in uber application and also security issues what you do you are gonna install you are gonna release another update let's say uh, uber 2.0 okay okay or yep. the same application with little bit more update you know in your phone your google chrome um, gets a update and it gets updated from automatically from Play Store, right? So in yeah. the back end, the developers are releasing updates so that your application is safe and secure. 
Yeah. So similarly, your Windows computer will also need update on regular basis. Okay. Uh, so does it uh, also include the service packs also? Yeah, service pack, uh, security updates, uh, uh, general update, upgrade, feature pack, so critical update, definition update. So these are the classification of updates. Okay. Understood. Okay. Okay. So Mm, slideshow and this one so we have discussed about uh, management point so let me uh, write down the information about software update point so we have already discussed about management point and distribution point now software update point is what it is needed to integrate WSUS into SCCM. Okay. Second, it is needed to deploy updates to SCCM client computers. Okay. Point number three, it is not mandatory because if you do not want to go with this one you can use WSUS for past deployment so it is an optional role okay point number four it can you can where will you install this it can be installed you can install this on SCAS as well central administration site server you can install this on primary site server you can install this on secondary site server or any other separate server as well clear guys uh, but by default it can be installed on a secondary only right uh, secondly you can install if you don't want to install you can skip that one so you will have you know it it works in 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 uh, upstream server and downstream server so for example you have primary site uh, and on that primary site you installed software update point software update point uh, in New York for example so this will be the 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 upstream one that means upstream means what this is this will be the front face to talk with uh, um, with Microsoft okay in the back end it basically it WSUS talks so this will be the software update point uh, on the top and then you can install this on secondary site as well okay if that is your requirement so then this uh, software update point will be the downstream one So it will replicate the data here with this uh, software update point. So basically all the computers in Mumbai, for example, okay. The, let's say there are 2000 computers in Mumbai. They will get scanned from here. They won't, they won't be scanned from this one because this is on the, in the New York. So if you install on the secondary side, then the scanning will happen from this location rather than if you don't want to do that then the scanning will happen from here one software update point for multiple region that is also possible okay any question guys Okay, guys, so let's move on to the next point. And that is a fallback status point. 
fallback status point is basically for uh, a status message and uh, SCCM client installation. Okay, so you have uh, let's say primary site and primary site also has management point like this and uh, you have some computers uh, let's say 2000 computers are there for example and all will have sscm client sscm client is installed in all the computers now they the the usual behavior is the client will keep on communicating with this management point right for inventory and status message as well you know the client send the state message state message is what you know when you deploy any application first what happens it gets the policy that is one status message then it uh, download the application file then that is another status message then after download and downloading it is going to apply the application install the application then it is going to um, post verify all these are status message so whatever happening to the computer step by step it sends the status message to management point but in case if management point goes down so what will happen so we will have fallback status point which is gonna do which is gonna collect only the status message not like it is not the replica of management point that whatever the management point can do it will do everything no that's not uh, the role of my fallback status point fallback status point basically collects it collects what a status message it collects state messages state messages from um, client computers from client computers okay when management point is down when MP is down second now let's say distribution point is also down our distribution point is not available for example let's say in one region distribution point is not available we have not installed distribution point but we need to install client let's say we need to install client and distribution point is down the client is not present in this computer so it can download from here the client only the client not the package or any other package only the client software can be downloaded and installed here so it uh, it can uh, it sends client uh, installer when dp is down or not available dp is unavailable okay clear it is also an optional role it is not mandatory so suppose if you don't want to install fsp you can skip that one point number four where will you install this you can install this on uh, you can install fsp on primary site server on the same server you can install fsp or you can install this on any other separate server okay you can also install this on secondary site server understood clear You, uh, you I just want to ask. Yeah. Uh, uh, so the fallback status point work as to deploy the SSCM client to the uh, new workstations. New workstation or existing workstation. Okay. If in the absence of DP or MP. If the absence of in the absence of DP, not MP. MP is for not for MP does not store the content. Contents are stored in DP. MP contains the instruction, the policies. Okay. okay. So that's the role of fallback status point. It is an optional role. So we have discussed about this one is mandatory. The first one, second one is also mandatory. The third one is optional. The fourth one is also an optional role. Yes. Akash, if I'm having question here. So, uh, client directly install uh, through DP. DP, not uh, we have to do any. For example, if any system is added, 
the SCCM mm. client is directly installed in that system? Or? Client installation are done. There are various methods of client installation. Okay. Uh, client installation you can install client manually like copying the software the client installation software and then install it manually you can install that one second you can push client push installation there is another one is which is client push installation so uh, basically it is based on the discovery the moment the computer is discovered into sccm console or sccm database automatically the client will push to that computer let's say you join 10 computers to the domain so the moment you join these 10 computers to the domain right automatically they will be discovered in sccm and the client will get pushed to all these computers so they, they will in, receive the client package and installation starts okay third method you can also deploy the client using gpo group policy you can also deploy a, a client using uh, software update you can also deploy client when imaging during operating system deployment let's say you are installing windows 10 so first what we will do you will install operating system windows 10 and then you will install client on this computer there are multiple methods which we will discuss later on okay yes application catalog and application uh, uh, web service these both are deprecated now previously we used to have like a play store in every uh, in in companies we used to have a website i'll show you the website how the website looks like okay we used to have a website like this website you see this is the website you go to internal website everyone can go to this website and SCCM administrator administrator will publish all the applications you know the common application on that website so user suppose I am a user I need one application let's say Microsoft Office I don't have to call help desk I can just go to this website and then click on install it will get installed in my computer right so that was previous um, um, feature of uh, sccm uh, this one application catalog website point and web service point these both of them are deprecated now so in the new new version of sccm you do not have this feature okay because they have integrated this one in software center itself it's like a play store you know on play you go to play store all app published applications are there and you can download and install similarly you can go to this website and all published applications from sccm are there and you can download and install okay so these are deprecated i'm not going to go into details now because this is no more um, present in sscm so these two are deprecated okay both of them now sms provider sms provider is what we will uh, take another 10 minutes is that okay guys yeah okay yeah okay <laughs> okay okay yeah Okay. okay sms provider is also a mandatory role this one is mandatory role what is the role of this one sms provider sms provider is basically a communication bridge between sccm server and database sccm server directly does not talk to database that's not possible for sccm server because sccm uses wmi query language for communication you know it, it it talks in wmi and database talks in sql query language so both are using two different language if you speak uh, let's say you speak marathi and i speak hindi right i cannot communicate with you because we both are speaking two different language so we need one translator in between who can you know who will know both the languages and they can that guy will translate the double the, the hindi to marathi and marathi to hindi vice versa so we have sms provider here which sits between sccm and database so this is like 
you know taking wmi from here and converting into sql and feeding into the database so this is what this is like a postman okay so it acts like uh, it acts like a translator okay translator uh, it uh, it um, sits between sccm and database third it is a mandatory role you can't skip this one because if you can if you skip this one then there will be no communication between sccm and database it um, is a mandatory role mandatory role okay point number four where will you install this either you install this on sms provider on in this computer or you can install this on database as well i mean uh, sms provider here on this or you can install this on any other you can install it on any other windows server okay so sms provider you install it here and sccm will communicate with this sms provider and then like this so uh, you can install sms provider either on primary site or you install this on database server or you install this on any other separate windows server got it so this is like a postman between sccm and database um, asset intelligence synchronization point is for categorization of software suppose you have uh, 20000 computers and in these 20000 computers if you uh, you know these are 20000 computers and every computer will have some software let's say this has microsoft office then uh, google chrome and other software this also have some software this also have some software so in total if you calculate the total number of software let's say these are like 50000 softwares these are 50,000 softwares present in all our 20,000 computers. Now, in order to categorize these software, right, we need this asset intelligence synchronization point. So let me just show you how the categorization happen. So categorization will happen like uh, this one. So categorization will happen like this one. Some software will fall under browser category like Google Chrome, Firefox, Safari, Internet Explorer, Opera. Some software will fall under player category. Some software will, will uh, fall under database category. Some will fall under developer category. It also manages licenses as well. Suppose you integrate license um, into SACM and you would like to know on how many computers the license is being utilized. So asset intelligence will, you know, uh, scan the computers and give you the details of the computers where the license is being consumed you can install this on primary site or secondary site or any other windows server that is your asset intelligence synchronization point guys clear endpoint protection is to manage antivirus suppose if you have computers and you would like to um manage the windows antivirus the windows defender or the previously we used to have system center uh, endpoint protection antivirus if you would like to go with those uh, microsoft antivirus then you can use sccm to manage that one you can't manage uh, uh, semantic or norton right so uh, this is basically it is required to install antivirus on the target machine install and manage sorry i did not mention here install and manage antivirus on target computers the windows one not the the default one okay like windows defender and system center endpoint protection and uh, it can be installed on you can install this on primary secondary or any other windows server and it is an optional role because most of the companies are going with uh, third party antivirus like uh, sem uh, semantic or uh, uh, norton or avg or trend micro these are uh, pretty common in uh, companies rather than this one reporting services point is basically to uh, it is required to integrate the reports 
from database into sccm so you have all your reports here in the database and if you would like to access the report uh, from sccm itself then you need to install reporting services point and then reporting reports will be integrated here then you can access the reports from here okay through a website or you can install it on the console and then through console you can access so it is basically required to connect to the report server and fetch reports from database then it is installed on the you can install only on reporting server. you can install this on database server itself you uh, cannot install in any other server that's the it is mandatory as well okay it is mandatory role clear guys service connection point it is to keep sccm up to date currently we are using 2006 for example and tomorrow microsoft releases 2010 so in order to upgrade from the old version to the latest version so we need service connection point the service connection point is required to keep sccm up to date it connects with microsoft update uh, server to bring the sccm updates it is required to integrate intune so uh, this was the previous feature this is deprecated now so you can skip this point this is deprecated previously we used to integrate intune in sccm that is deprecated by sccm in last year in september so you can't integrate intune in sccm now so previously we used to do that now it must be installed on primary site so we installed this on primary site a plus if you have cas let's say you have cas server as well so you can install this on cas server too uh, sorry not primary you have cas then you install service connection point service connection point you can install service connection point on primary or you can install this on cas server so point number one it is required to keep sccm up to date point number two it is needed to update from old version to the latest version point number three you can install this on primary and cas server it is not mandatory this is an optional role because if you don't want to update you can skip this one clear everyone yes. uh, uh, can you just uh, take back to the slide where the asset intelligence synchronization point was described uh so uh as you said that uh, we can also manage the licenses uh through this uh, role so mm. i just want to know for example if i am having an application uh and we do have a license for that one so most of the time what happened uh, the engineer we need to go to the user desk or take the access and enter the license key so is there any way we can just push the key also with the application no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Yeah, pushing is possible. That is done through deployment, you know, application deployment. You can integrate the license into application and then deploy. That is another thing. But for asset intelligence, it is for the inventory purpose. It's not, it does not, it has nothing to do with the deployment of license. You can't push the license from through this asset intelligence. This is basically to find out on how many systems the license is being consumed. Okay. Pushing is possible. You can integrate. Let's say you have to have license key somewhere uh, in the application, either on the registry or in the one of the locations in C drive or somewhere. That is possible. We can create some script file and deploy through SCCM. You, you whatever the engineer is doing manually, we can script. Uh, we can create a script for that and deploy through SCCM. That's possible. Okay. Now, uh, so last point is uh, uh, service connection point. Service connection point, it is required during migration. Suppose if you have a computer Windows 7, and this is like old computer, and you can't install um, Windows 10 on this box due to some hardware um, compatibility issue or something, okay? <clears throat> so whatever, let's say James is using this computer, uh, for quite a long time let's say two years he has been using this computer and he has some files folders and 
documents and favorites and everything in this computer now i am going to give a new computer to james because this computer cannot be upgraded from windows 7 to windows 10 so when you are going to upgrade or due to some reason i'm going to format and give the same operating system whatever the condition you can capture all his documents and uh, the data what we he has on his uh, user profile we can capture using this uh, state migration point and we can store somewhere on state migration point uh, storage uh, share drive and then when we give windows 10 computer or the same operating system so we will restore whatever the data we captured right we are going to restore back all the data here so james will not lose any data okay the user profile data not the system profile data guys user profile data will basically this is not ssm uh, feature this is a windows feature so state migration uh, is integrated into ssm so basically it can it captures the user profile before the migration and restore after the migration it can be installed you can install this on primary secondary or any other windows server and this is an optional role as well clear everyone <clears throat> i hope it's clear right everyone yes now we already discussed about these things uh, the features and functionalities which we will uh, do later on you know when we do the practical we will touch each point one by one like hardware inventory software inventory asset intelligence software meeting all these points we are gonna touch practically then you will get more idea so i'm gonna skip this one and lab setup now i think every one of you will go on azure right uh, i am gonna ask anyone who has this configuration those who are anyone who is going to set it set it up on local lab uh, yeah i do have this configuration have but uh, only uh, 8 gb of ram is there so that means the configuration is not there ssd okay. is there you have ssd i do have ssd i have ssd it's a 250 okay. gb but 250 gigabyte free right free disk space uh, no. <laughs> no then how much free uh, it's showing me some 149 gb free 149 okay so um, that is not um, the minimum requirement actually at least you have 200 gigabyte 8 gigabyte is also okay um let's do one thing you go on azure first and then later on you can uh, after once the subscription is over after 30 days you create your local lab okay okay by the time you can do some cleanup and all anyone else Hello. apart from yogesh yes uh, rupesh here yes rupesh uh, i have uh, 16 gb ram and one terabyte ssd or uh, the plain hard disk a plain hardest okay i think you can do it um rupesh is um, rupesh can do that and a processor it's i5 i5 that's possible anyone else ilango you said you have 500 gigabyte hard disk what is the processor and ram i7 okay and ram Sorry, my miss, my mic is not working. Okay, so I think uh, uh, Yogesh, Yogesh, you do it later on. Okay, so I'm not writing your name. So um, I think Elango and uh, the second guy, Rupesh, right? You both can, uh, sorry, you both can um, install it on a local laptop. Apart from uh, Yogesh and uh, I mean Ilango and Rupesh, you guys go on Azure Cloud Data Center. Uh, Akashif, I have a question. Mm. Uh, so, which one is better? You know, basically, uh, local is always better. Local is always better because you get uh, you you have lab. You don't have to pay anything. It is free of cost, 
uh, for 130 day, 180 days, like six months, you can use uh, SSCM. And after six months, you can fr format the servers and rebuild SSCM. And you keep on doing that. But Azure is like after 30 days, you will have to pay. Okay. After 30 days, not during the first 30 days. First 30 days is free of cost. So how about the work? You know, the same. Uh... You can see the picture, you know, everything like once everything is same from Azure and uh, internal lab. Yeah, everything is similar. A little bit different, like in some network configurations are uh, some, some different, but everything same. Because we, what we are going to do is we will either you do it on local or you do it in Azure. It is like Windows Server, right? Yeah. So uh, if, if we got, uh, if we reach an on site, we have. We, we have to face in you know, like a local lab only, right? Not to do Azure, right? Yes. Mostly okay. people are using local lab. Okay, thanks a lot. No worries. Okay, so those who are going to use uh, Azure Azure subscription. Okay, so I want you guys to send me your email address in chat window so that I can send you this email address. I mean, it is email to everyone. Can you start sending me the email? I just copy and paste it here. Send email. Sir, can you here. email to me also? I'll okay. build my setup later on. Okay, send me here in this chat. Go to meeting chat, not in WhatsApp, here in this chat. I just sent you a how. Yes, good. So I got it from Yogesh. Okay, Yogesh sent that to me and that's it. No one else? Okay, Danish colon. First time I see the Danish and then colon. Is that right, Danish? No, no, no. So it starts with K, right? So I just oh, okay. ended my... Okay, okay. okay. So it's not uh, so. Yogesh, is your email address correct? Yogesh hyphen. I think that's it. that is right. Then uh, you have yes. uh, okay MS ready, and then Rupesh, and then uh, Amit uh, Joshi. And uh, uh, Amit Joshi has two email address. I don't know which one is correct. I sent it to you guys directly because I was sending some chat to him. That's why. Okay, okay. Anyone left? Ilango, I didn't. Okay, so you are not going in Azure. Okay, Ilango and. Uh, Fine, so I'm gonna send this email guys to everyone. Now for uh, uh, Windows Server 2019. Windows Server 2019. Huh. Windows Server 2019, yes. I think you can use this one. Yeah, so let me send this one. So Ilango, you send your email address here. Those for this is for who will set up on local lab, okay? So now what you have to do, and Rupesh, you also send your email address. Yes. Rupesh, I think, uh, okay, Rupesh. Okay. And uh, Yogesh, 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 you will do it later on. Now this is simple. What you have to do, you need to download Windows Server ISO. VMware, you need to download and install. This one, step number two, download and install. Okay. And um, download Windows Server, uh, SQL Server. And uh, you download... Uh, Window uh, system center. I mean micro, Microsoft endpoint configuration now create three server download and uh, and uh, create 
three windows server on on vm vmware okay you will be able to do that guys ilango and uh, rupesh uh, i don't know kashif i'm sorry how to do it actually hyper v yeah. is also okay yes you can do uh, it on hyper v i'm sorry uh, kashif actually my microphone doesn't work so i just switched hmm. off my audio and then i turned it on again so hyper v is fine right hyper v is fine okay uh hyper vs vmware you don't know right okay if you don't know that's not a problem but you make sure you download all these things okay, okay. yeah thank you guys so i just sent that to you guys now so before i we meet tomorrow uh, please uh, get this ready both of you those who are going on azure and those who are going on local sure okay any question guys before we wrap it up all good uh, tomorrow at what time uh, kashif same time 9 8:30 now i want you guys to send me a high message on uh, this number so that i can create a whatsapp group 9892354331 this is the number whatsapp number make a note of it and send me a high message so that i can create a whatsapp group guys and add you guys in okay uh first of all if i create a azure uh, site now only it will okay uh, or it will expire uh, before uh, our course complete means so whenever you create it starts from there and 30 days from there if you create today it will count from today better you can do it tomorrow morning or afternoon okay 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 yeah sure okay thank you guys we'll meet uh, tomorrow and i'm going to upload uh, um the video on google drive and share the link with you guys make sure you send me your uh, gmail address as well everyone on whatsapp your gmail address okay thank you bye bye guys thank you okay. bye good night